Hello and welcome to My Code Coffee. We are now starting next unit dedicated to block and blockchain structure. Concepts detailing the structure of a block and related components will be covered in this unit. This chapter, which is chapter 16 in the series of Bitcoin blockchain, explains the structure of a block in the blockchain. By the end of this chapter, you will understand the structure of each block in the blockchain, how blocks connect to form a blockchain, and how Markle root ensures that you cannot alter a transaction in a block without altering all subsequent blocks. So let's start. As you know, blockchain is the chain of blocks. So what does this individual block looks like? Let us examine it closely. Logically, you can divide a block in four parts. The first four bytes gives you the block size. Next 80 bytes is the block header. I will talk more about block header in a moment. Next one to nine bytes gives you the number of transactions that are going to follow. And then remaining bytes are actual transactions. I have already discussed transactions in detail in previous chapters. Please, please, please check out those videos if you are not very clear about the concept of transactions in blockchain. Here, let us examine the header of a block. So what is a header in the block of a blockchain? You can think of header as the metadata of the block, which has four set of very useful information. Number one, it has the version information to track software or protocol upgrades. Number two, it has the hash of the header of previous block, which connects this block to the previous block. Number three, it has something called Markle root. Next chapter is dedicated to the concept of Markle root and Markle tree. But for now, you can think of Markle root as the summary of all the transactions of this block, which means if there is any change in any of the transaction of this block, then Markle root will also change. Fourth set of metadata is all about mining. What is mining and how mining competition works that we will discover in the section of mining. But here I just want to tell you that as part of mining metadata, it has timestamp of block creation, difficulty target of proof of work algorithm and a counter called nonce, which is used for the proof of work algorithm. As I said earlier, these mining related attributes like difficulty target and nonce, we will discuss in the section of mining. Now let's talk about this hash of the header of previous block in somewhat more detail. I have seen many people call it as hash of previous block, but actually it is hash of the header of previous block. This value is obtained by applying SHA 256 algorithm twice to the header of previous block. So this hash is a pointer to previous block. In fact, this hash uniquely identifies previous block. In other words, hash of the header of any block is the unique identifier of that block. And since all block points to the identifier of previous block, it creates a chain of block and we call it blockchain. So coming back to the unique identifier thing, as I said, hash of the header of any block is also called block identifier because it uniquely identifies the block. But as you can see, ironically, a block does not contain this identifier, though it contains identifier of previous block. These block identifiers, which is hash of the header, are often stored separately for indexing and search of the block. There is one more way of identifying a block apart from hash of its header, and that is block height. Block height is the position of the block in the blockchain. Genesis block, which is the first block in the Bitcoin blockchain, is considered to be at position zero. So as you can see, there are two types of block identifiers. They are block header hash, and block height. Now one thing to note is that block height may not always identify a single block. The reason is that more than one block may be competing for the same position. This we will see in the section of mining. Now coming back to this chain of blocks, we must understand that if we change any transaction, it will change the header. Why? Because header has Markle root, which is the summary of all transactions. So if we change any transaction, Markle root will change, which means header will change, which subsequently means that hash of this header will change, which means this value, which is hash of header of previous block will change, 
which means that this header has changed and its hash has changed. So you see that changing any transaction in a block would create a ripple effect and you cannot change any transaction in the block without changing all subsequent blocks. In first chapter of the blockchain, I have discussed that this is the first layer of defense of the blockchain system along with proof of work algorithm and consensus. So in this chapter, we discuss the structure of block, block identifiers and how blockchain formation happens. We also touched upon Markle root and said that it is the summary of all transactions. But what does it mean and how it summarizes the transactions? We will see in the next chapter, which is dedicated to Markle tree and Markle root. See you there and enjoy my code coffee. If you now want to move to the next chapter, you can click on this card. And yes, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon because so many interesting videos are on the way. For easy navigation to all chapters, visit mycodecoffee.com. Thank you so much for watching.